Well, hey there, this is Derek, the Convicted Cinephile, and if you're a convicted cinephile yourself, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel down below if you haven't. On my channel, I like to talk, shop, and pop open, that is, movies and physical media. Today, I thought I would do a hashtag spoof movie summer video, just showing off my collection of spoof movies I own. Now, it's kind of hard to gauge where some of these fall and whether or not they are spoof movies, but these are all the movies I own that I would at least consider to be in that gray area of whether or not they are spoof movies. And uh, I have more than I thought I did. <laughs> so <laughs> this video might be longer than I was hoping, but I didn't have anything else planned for the day. So I thought I would shoot this. I'm going down to the basement cause I got some time that's free. Spoof movie, spoof movie, summer. I want some good Bailey laughs, but I really don't wanna think. Spoof movie, spoof movie, summer. We had fun, fun, fun until cancel culture took them away. All right, first I'm going to go through a chunk that is primarily stuff that I have covered already um, this month on my videos. The movie, or one of the two movies, I'll get to the other one, that inspired me to do this month in the first place was re-watching UHF for the thousandth time. I love this movie, as you can see. I put up a video just about UHF and a little bit of backstory about it and stuff. So give that a watch if you haven't. If you're a Weird Al fan or just a comedy fan in general... This movie's hilarious, and it's a fantastic Blu-ray with a lot of really good special features, actually. I did a video dedicated to the Waynes family, also. So check that out if you didn't. But I got the Scary Movie 1 through 3 pack. Usually I don't buy multi-packs, but I like Scary Movie 1, 2, and 3. And I don't really like Scary Movie 4 and 5, so it works out. Uh, <laughs> the Waynes brothers did the first two. David Zucker did the third, which I mentioned in my video about that. I will be getting to David Zucker again in a little bit. I like these movies. I watched them all in one day, which I can't remember the last time I watched three movies back to back to back like that at home. But they're short enough that I was able to do it. And I enjoyed them. I think I like the second one the most. I'm like one of those weird people. Usually that's everyone's least favorite, it seems like. But I prefer the fact that it makes fun of more classic horror movies, like The Changeling and The uh, Exorcist, things like that. It's not 100% like pop culture references like the first scary movie where it was just mostly Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer and stuff like that. So I kind of appreciate it for that. Makes it gives it a little more of a timeless feel, I think. I haven't had a chance to watch either of these, <laughs> but I bought them the day I, uh, first day of June when I announced, or not June, but July, when I announced the uh, spoof movie Summer. I got the Haunted House movies, which are a Owens related production. Um, yeah, I just haven't got around to watching them. There's so many other things I have to watch that, I mean, they got pushed to the wayside, but I got them cheap. I'll watch them eventually. I did watch this. Blink Man. <laughs> My, uh, personal favorite Damon Wayans led film that I've had. I grew up with this one. See, when you're a comic book kid, you like superhero movies and stuff, but they just don't make them in the 90s back then, really. I loved Blank Man and Meteor Man and stuff like that because it was a superhero movie I could watch as a kid. They just didn't make them back then. So that's what I had. You, you're all complaining about all these Marvel movies. I had to watch Blank Man every day. Uh, I just recently did a video dedicated to Trey Parker and Matt Stone and their smaller, shorter, and offensive filmography. Give it a, give it a gander. Uh, but I got all their movies here. They're not all necessarily spoof movies, but they kind of fall in that gray area like I was referencing. This is obviously a comedy musical, which is also a based on a true story style movie, Cannibal the Musical. This movie's hilarious. It has a fantastic soundtrack and arguably the best commentary track in any movie ever. It's only on DVD. Hopefully they make a Blu-ray one day or just skip all that and uh, put it on 4K for some reason. That'd be great. Rittiger Syndrome just put out a <laughs> Cannibal the Musical 4K VSU edition. I'll gladly buy that from you. Next we have Orgasmo, which I just rewatched yesterday. Uh, it's funny. I enjoy it. It's it's my least favorite of all their movies still, but I still enjoy it. It's just a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of Trey and Matt humor, and it's just if you like South Park, which I love, you know South Park. I grew up with it. I enjoy it. And then, speaking of South Park, we have the movie itself. The only movie that made me laugh so hard I fell out of my seat, as I said in uh, the video. I go deeper into these, but uh, I already did my other video. But yeah, 
I didn't mention this Blu-ray. It's from Paramount. And the uh, same thing goes for the next one. Cannibal the Musical is a Troma DVD. Orgasmo is from Universal. Team America World Police. I finally just bought for Spoof Movie Summer. Haven't opened this one yet. I think I'm going to watch it today. <laughs> along, along with uh, one of the other ones here. This movie's hilarious. It's a uh, Michael Bay movie with puppets. With uh, South Park gross out humor injected into it. I hope this has the unrated version. I don't know if it does. So that kind of sucks if it doesn't. The unrated version is hilarious. But uh, the theatrical version is great too. My transitional movie here. Since this was starring Trey and Matt. But directed by David Zucker. This is my David Zucker pile we're going into here. Basketball. I love basketball. It's the perfect combination of spoof humor and South Park humor. So that's why I love it. This is the Universal release. And uh, Mill Creek just released one as well. This one I honestly forgot I owned until I was just like looking at my shelf. And I didn't even buy it that long ago. High School High. Um, this is not directed by the Zuckers, but it is written and produced by Zucker and Pat Prof and Robert Lokash, which are frequent collaborator writers. I love John Lovitz, <laughs> so I like this movie. Anything with John Lovitz, I like more than most people. Um, it only has the trailer on this Blu-ray, but I like it. It's basically a spoof of Dangerous Minds for the most part. That's kind of where it gets its basic concept from. If you haven't seen it, give it a watch. The other movie that inspired me to do Spoof Movie Summer, I haven't had a chance to talk about specifically, is Top Secret. From the creators of Airplane. This was what they did essentially post Airplane as far as movies go. And it's hilarious. It's a spy Elvis movie with cow costumes. So, Phil Kilmer's first movie and he's hilarious in it. The OG Airplane 1 and 2. I did a video about them, them, them as well. I did a video about Airplane 1 and 2. Because no one ever talked about Airplane 2, so I thought I'd give it some love. Airplane 1 is great. There's a much better release of Airplane 1 from Paramount Presents. I like the both, so I splurged. And by splurged, I mean paid less for the combo pack. I'm sure it's a lower quality transfer, but it looked fine. I watched them both. I love both of these movies. The second one is a lot funnier than I always expect it to be when I go back and revisit it. So it's like seven bucks. Even if you already have Airplane, just buy this to get Airplane 2. Because I honestly can't remember if there is an Airplane 2 release on its own and then we have the naked gun trilogy to round out my zucker brothers pile starring the brilliant leslie nielsen and these are all paramount releases which is funny i bought all of them the same day and they're all from paramount <laughs> but they're all on individual discs they're stacked to an extent because you got one on one side and two on the other side but it's not so bad all of these are like in the 13 15 dollar ballpark range for the set so Give them a buy and a rewatch if you haven't. All right, this pile is the uh, the legendary pile, I guess you could say. <laughs> Got my Mel Brooks collection. This thing is outstanding. It is out of print, I believe. There's two versions of it, this one, and then there's like a giant box version, which is essentially the same set, just with a book and more stuff. They did the same thing with the Planet of the Apes collection. I remember but i got this at costco for like 20 bucks back when i used to sell blu-rays and they never do anymore which sucks they used to sell criterions for 20 dollars year round too so i'm pissed off i never took advantage of that um but this set is great you got the 12 chairs which is hilarious blazing saddles my favorite young frankenstein most other people's favorite if it's not blazing saddles <laughs> silent movie super underrated very funny high anxiety alfred hitchcock spoof very good movie history of the world part one very funny. I think it's a tad on the slow side compared to the other films, but it's good. This is the only one I haven't watched, To Be or Not To Be, but he didn't direct this movie. He directed another movie called Life Stinks, which I talk about in my Mel Brooks video, but it's not in this set, which pisses me off. Spaceballs. Everyone loves Spaceballs. Robin Hood Men in Tights. The only thing missing, like I said, is that Life Stinks movie and Dracula Dead and Loving It. Which at least does have a Scream Factory Blu-ray that I need to get. But this set, if you can get your hands on it for a not ridiculous price, absolutely worth getting. The only other video I might have time to do this month will be dedicated to these movies here. The Monty Python trilogy of movies. We have... They're all DVDs too, which is funny. It's like one of the few... I sold a lot of my DVDs off, but I kept all these. Got the Holy Grail, like 
Lenticular Collector's Edition. Amazing movie. I'll go into them a little more in the video that I hope I make. <laughs> Life of Brian, I got the two disc collector's edition of this. There is a Criterion DVD of this, but I mean, this one's nicer because it has a better transfer and more features and all that. And then The Meaning of Life, which is getting a 4K from Universal. All these have been rumored for uh, 4Ks, but this one just got a seemingly a legit announcement, so that's fantastic. This movie's hilarious. I love this movie. It gets, <laughs> it started off being my least favorite of the movies, but grew on me to the point where it's like, depending on my mood, it's my favorite. This last pile I have here are spoofs that make fun of a genre more so than they make fun of a specific movie. And these are ones that I have not covered in any of my videos, but I wanted to talk about a little bit. So we're going to do that now. I got Pandemonium from Vinegar Syndrome, which is a horror spoof comedy. I think I'm going to watch this today as well, finally, for the first time. And this has Paul Rubens and Phil Hartman and Judge Reinhold in, like, pre-famous roles. Here's one I was going to do a video about, but I just don't think I'll have time. The Austin Powers movies, you know, spoofing on the spy genre. I was going to do a whole video based on just focusing on how many spoof spy movies there are in general. But then I was like, oh, let's do Austin Powers. And I was like, hey, I'll just talk about it here. But yeah, everyone likes Austin Powers for the most part. It started off being a you know mediocre hit that blew up on video, and then the second one was like one of the top grossing movies of the year in 1999, only under like The Sixth Sense and Episode One, and then it was The Spy Who Shagged Me. Goldmember did fantastic as well, but you could kind of see during that one that all the jokes were sort of running their course, but it's a very solid comedy trilogy that we don't really see very often. This movie's fantastic, and I wish I had more time to talk about it, but Black Dynamite is an outstanding black exploitation spoof. If you have not seen this movie, watch it. It is one of the last good spoof movies I've ever seen. This one's another one that's kind of in that gray area, but MacGruber, it's based on the you know SNL sketch, but it's basically a cliche action movie, but the character is just the dumbest person in the world and it's hilarious. Val Kilmer is the villain in it and he's outstanding <laughs> in this movie. I love Will Forte so this is just one of my favorite stupid comedies to throw on. Another one I was potentially going to do a video on was the uh, Coronetto trilogy. Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and was it At World's End? The World's End. There was like two World's End movies that came out at the same time. Um, yeah, Shaun of the Dead, obviously it's a take on the zombie horror genre. Hot Fuzz is the you know, Hollywood action movie, but, you know, set in England where it's just off kilter. World's End is like a weird sci-fi spoof movie. Shot of the Dead, I didn't like really that much the first time I saw it because I was expecting it to be like more of a Naked Gun-esque parody style movie. But then Hot Fuzz rolled around. I saw it in theaters when I was working there and I really liked Hot Fuzz. Went back, watched Shot of the Dead again, and then I fell in love with it. Especially once I got more into some of the zombie Romero movies and I, you know, caught all the jokes, then I definitely liked it. Shaun of the Dead has one of the best screenplays, at least for comedies, that you'll ever come around. And World's End, it's an entertaining watch. I've only watched it a couple times, but it's easily my least favorite. This one kind of gets forgotten about because it tanked at the box office, but it's really funny. Walk Hard, Dewey Cox Story, starring John C. Riley, who's amazing. Um, this is a spoof of, you know, musical biopics that goes through every decade imaginable somehow <laughs> with the same character you know it's prime it's mostly like uh walk the line spoof obviously the title kind of gives that away that's kind of the framing plot wise they give this movie but then you got like bob dylan spoofs in there and greaser music and all that kind of stuff thrown in the mix there's two different cuts of this movie on here there's the theatrical cut which is funny and then there's the it's, what's it called? Unbearably long, self-indulgent director's cut, which is like two hours long. It's like a half an hour longer or something like that. But this movie's really funny. I did When I saw it in theaters, I liked it enough. I grabbed this, rewatched it a couple times, and it grew on me, and I really like it now. And last but not least, probably the last decent spoof movie, and what year did this come out? I always forget. I want to say 2014, is a Western spoof created by Seth MacFarlane. A Million Ways to Die in the West. Another movie that just didn't hit at the box office. Ted was a surprise hit 
he made before. And then he did this, and he had more free reign to do what he wanted, it seemed like, in this movie. I thought this movie was hilarious, and it just kind of, nobody gave a shit. It seemed like when it came out, Liam Neeson's the villain, he's funny, Charlize Theron's funny. This is when she was filming Mad Max, so she had her head shaved, so she's wearing a wig throughout the whole movie, so that's just kind of funny to think about. This movie's hilarious. It definitely has airplane-esque style spoof gags throughout it. And it's just a straightforward Western story with, you know, the innocent man character having to fight the bad guys who are coming in to destroy his town or what have you. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I was like butt gusting laughing during this movie many times over. If you haven't watched this movie, give it a watch. It's really funny. If you're in a mood for a stupid, funny movie and you haven't seen this, give it a try. Especially if you like Family Guy or Ted. I like this way more than either of the Ted films. Like, they're fine, but this movie I can actually rewatch over and over again and catch something new every time. And the songs in it are hysterical. I think that's it. <laughs> I know there's some I don't own, I'm sure. Uh, but those are the ones I have. I'm going to watch a couple today, one I haven't seen yet, one I haven't seen in like 15 years. I'll hopefully get at least one or two more Spoof Movie Summer videos out before the end of the month, before I unveil what will hopefully be my August theme. Once again, my name is Derek, the Convicted Cinephile. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Leave a comment. What's your favorite spoof movie? What spoof movie do you love that I didn't mention? That's what I want to know. Do you have any that I haven't mentioned in any of my videos or in my pile here that I haven't had a chance to make a video about? That's what I want to know. Tell me. Give me more spoofs to watch because they just don't make them anymore. It's been eight years since we've had a spoof movie after this, it seems like. At least one that was watchable. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Up, shop, pop, movies.